just let people know, as we all know, he was greatly loved there and never happier, happier watching uh, when he was sitting there watching the Blues. So thoughts of your family, my friends. Thoughts of your family. And um, Liam Days, good evening. Good evening. Very nice to have you along. Thanks ever so much for giving you time up on a Monday night. We're doing this all the way through the pandemic just to keep in touch with all the fans and supporters out there. And uh, it's really good of you to join us tonight, mate. A nice one. Thank you very much. No problem. My pleasure. Brilliant, brilliant. Uh, unfortunately, we can't do this in the studio, but you live down uh, Essex Way? No, no, Hampshire. I'm on the south coast near Portsmouth. I live on near Westbury? Near Portsmouth. Oh, right, OK, right, OK, cool. Um, OK, so we've seen all over this week then the uh, the, the masks from Accessi Blues. Mine's, <clears throat> mine's in the post, so I'll get that, should get it tomorrow, day after. And a big thank you, Steve Portman. A big thank you to everyone who gave us donations over the weekend. This will definitely help us towards our next funding target for this year. As this incentive was so popular, we've put in an order for some more masks and we'll hopefully have these within a week. The £5 minimum donation is there to cover the cost of sourcing the masks. If anybody can afford to donate more, as some have, this is very much appreciated. Please follow our page for further updates and keep right on Accessi Blues. Fantastic. Nice one. Excessive Blues are our uh, dis disabled supporters group there. And, uh, well, what, what a bunch of people they are. They're absolutely smashing. Lovely. Um, <clears throat> I suppose you get asked this all the time, but tell us a trumpet. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I haven't got the trumpet. It was never my trumpet. And I was uh, you know, booked for, the f for blowing someone else's trumpet instead of my own. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If the guilty partner who owned the trumpet is actually listening tonight, please identify yourself. <laughs> no, and if it's your trumpet, we want to know. <laughs> uh, you got booked for that one, and then uh, that was that took you up to forty-one points, and you three match back. You? I don't know if it was three match. I know I got. I think it might have been one or two, but um, yeah, it was bizarre, really. I mean, we'd scored, and someone had just thrown it on there, on the, and it, you know, landed at my feet, and <laughs> natural reaction. You what are you going to do it, are you? Of course you are. <laughs> <laughs> Marvellous, brilliant. Any idea who, who was against? Do you remember? Chester. Sorry? Chester. Leicester. No, Leicester. Chester. 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 Chester City. Chester City, yeah. It's all right. A bit of a... I think you, need, you might need to get a bit closer, Liam. I think your mic's, uh, your sound's a bit funny. Is that better? Yeah, we'll go for that one. We'll get there. We'll get uh, there. The auto windscreens final, nineteen ninety-five. What a day out! What a day out! We'd had, we'd had, of course, the the joy of the uh, Leyland Daft Cup final four years previous to that, and uh, and then to go back to Wembley again as a fan and win a trophy. It, it may have only been what some people term as you know the lower leagues trophy or whatever, but we went and we won, and uh, the support once again from our fans was absolutely superb. Oh, it was an unbelievable day. Um, bearing in mind, we were going for, you know, we had a lot of pressure on us to go go up as well um, after being relegated. So, um, and I remember, I think we came back from Plymouth. We'd won at Plymouth and we, uh, we had to, we, the next game was the, the Wembley, Wembley final. Um, and we, we, we'd had a backlog of fixtures. We were playing Saturday, Tuesday, but... Um, yeah, I remember coming back from Plymouth, absolutely knackered, and uh, but we had the the Wembley, the Wembley uh, final to look forward to, and uh, oh, it was just a fantastic day. I think there was about sixty, seventy thousand there, and, and obviously the old Wembley as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, it was it was just a great day, a great occasion. I don't know if the game was all that, but what an end as well. What a what a finale at the end with Tate's, you know. Course, I remember. Sorry, Nick. Sorry? The, the famous T-shirt incident at the end. Yeah, yeah, uh, and uh, only Tatey would pull that off, you know, sort of um, big blue nose, and uh, we didn't know nothing about it. You know, we weren't aware of anything. I, I don't think T-shirts were really came into it, but he obviously had it in the back of his mind what he was going to do if he mm -hmm. had. He, he said he just found it in the box, and that was the last one that it, uh, that was dished out. Yeah, well, if you believe that, you believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember parking. 
Sorry, he got summed up to the Gaffer's uh, office after that, didn't he? He got, uh, he got pulled in by uh, Sullivan, I think it was, wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> but I think we all got pulled in during that season at one one uh, one time or another. But, you know, there wasn't... As long as we were winning and we were winning trophies, I don't think there was... Or, or doing well, I don't think there was really any much of a... I think it was a slap on the wrist more than anything. Well, the reason he pulled him in is because he said he, uh, he thought it was an absolutely brilliant idea and he wanted to market him in the club shop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You imagine how many would have been sold? It'd have been, well, everybody would have had one, wouldn't they? Well, he's gone down in folklore over it, hasn't he? And um, yeah, I remember absolutely. the picture as well that was on the back page of the news and it was just typical, you know. I'm quite fortunate because it was literally right in front where I was sat anyway. Yeah, it was, um, yeah, it was he's, as I say, Bit of an icon now regarding the T-shirt, and but he did score the goal as well. He did, yeah, yeah. And he scored the uh, the first goal. I think it was against Swansea City in the first round. Yeah, uh, I mean, we, had, um, we played a lot of games in there. And I remember, I remember, I think we went down to Peterborough in that that, uh, um, and we 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 were having a bit of a bad time. I think we were two 0 down, and and I think little uh, Jose Dominguez came on, or, or and. and just ripped them apart and scored three or scored a couple or scored. Yeah, I was I was at that game. He ate a couple. And, um, that That's was, a long long journey from my house to Peterborough and back in the day. <laughs> but that got us that got us through, and then just the momentum of the season. You know, we wanted to win every game. Mm. Mm. I, I remember um, my dad's my dad's best mate drove us to Wembley, um, and he was struggling to park, and it was a good hour and twenty minute walk that we managed to get in. So we walked an hour and 20 minutes. I remember getting to the entrance to the turnstile and there was a parking space right outside the stadium. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, remember, I remember saying to him, yeah, oh, you could have parked there. <laughs> you get to do Trust that, you. <laughs> Trust you. Yeah, great time. Okay, great so day. the big news, great, the big great, news out great. of the camp this week then is uh, Pepper's decided that his uh, tenure is over. He's now going to finish at the end of the season. Thoughts on that, Paul? I think there's more than meets the eye with it, if I'm being honest. Uh, I think I just said, didn't I, before we come on air, um, he's, he's, he's come out and said that he's seeking, uh, well, he's doing it to seek other coaching opportunities. Now, what does that mean? I mean, you don't, in my mind, and I don't know about you or anyone else, but you don't, you don't give up what you've got unless you've got something better, do you, surely? I mean, is he going to get something better than the head coach of Birmingham City Football Club? Um, I don't know. So, for me, I think now the owner's... Um, I mean, I don't know, obviously, but whether he's got frustrated with the way it's set up, obviously, and, you know, there's too much interference from above, um, you know, as an outsider looking in, that's my thoughts on it. And, and obviously that's been issues we've managed in the past. So for me, I think the owners need to have a look now at the way they do, they're, they're running this operation and, and, and make a few changes themselves as well with the next manager. Otherwise, we're never going to go anywhere. Mm. Mm. It's always us, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. What do you think, Liam? What, what are your thoughts, mate? Well, I just think, um, you know, it's it, like you just said, it's, it's uh, Birmingham City and controversy always seem to go hand in hand. Something yeah. Going on. Um, as you said, I, I find it a little bit strange, especially at this, the timing of it as well, um, where, you know, it's a, a massive club. We all know that. You're in a job. You know, unless you've got something that you're stepping into, but I think it might be, uh, you know, I, I think it might be something more to do with maybe they've got someone else lined up, or and uh, maybe yeah. he's being asked to leave, and if he's going to ask, if he's going to be asked to leave, and he's got, um, uh, you know, a year on his, on his contract or whatever he's got on his contract, he might have had to sign some sort of disclaimer to just go amicably get his pay off and go I don't know but um, it just seems very strange especially with the timing of it that there hasn't been any football um, don't know when football's going to start uh, really and and to step out of a job um, at this time you know you've got to be a pretty brave man unless you've got something lined up yeah exactly you wouldn't give up what you've got would you unless you've got something better to go to than what you're doing and is Pep Pe Cassette going to get a bigger and better job than the head coach of Birmingham City Football Club I, I don't think so you know so it's, it's, it's yeah. always the same though, though isn't it there's always a bit of controversy whether it's owners and managers not getting on and you know there was a little bit of that when I was there but 
I think the momentum of playing games and winning winning games sort of smoothed that over. But you know, it's um, it, it it just seems to go hand in hand with Blues at the moment, um, and it's gone on too often and for too long now that it to be a coincidence. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And obviously, the, the interference from above. Obviously, when you're trying to do the job, it must be frustrating as a manager. You know, um, I mean, back when you play, was there much interference from above on the footballing side of things? So I think there was, um, you know, there was a lot of strong characters <clears throat> with, uh, you know, Karen, David, Barry. Um, but, and we knew there was always a, some rumblings behind. There was always, there was always some uh, argument or a bit of controversy in that. But I think that, that sort of created a little bit more of a siege mentality for us. It was us against them a little bit. Um, uh, but, and then, and that's, but Barry was very good at that. Barry was very good at sort of um, having a moan about it, but laughing about it and just letting us get on with, with playing. And um, But I, yeah. just, I think winning games sort of papered over a bit of um, any any sort of disharmony behind the scenes. Because mm. we, 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 we've... Barry, what was he like as a gaffer? Yeah. Um, Be honest. Yeah, I, listen, he, he was he wasn't a coach. Um, he he surrounded himself with strong characters. Um, the dressing room sort of run itself. He was very good at. He'd let you know if he weren't happy, uh, and you know we'd, he'd tell you straight uh, in so many words. And uh, but he never, that never lingered on. That never lingered on. The next day. You know, he would, uh, he would. He wasn't really bothered about what you were doing during the week, as long as you did it on the Saturday. But if you hadn't performed, he'd let you know. But you know, he uh, he, he liked honest players that would, uh, if you know, if, if they didn't perform or if they um, made a ricket or they messed up off the pitch or whatever or caused a little bit of um, concern for him, as long as you were honest with it and held your hand up. He was fine with it. I think he treated people as men and as human beings, and uh, and he gave the responsibility to players, um, and he took all the all the other side. He was the he was the front, he was the front, and he just let you get on with it. But you know, we were all you know, he's, his recruitment was good. He signed good players. He signed good men and uh, and honest men, and you know, not all necessarily always the best players. And superstars, but we were a team, and um, and 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 that proved it. Mm. <clears throat> Proof was in the pudding, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, as as I said, the they, they were they were strong lads all round the pitch, um, big characters. Um, but um, you know, he seemed to be able to manage them characters well, all different types. Um, and he was a character himself, and um, oh, he managed the press brilliantly, didn't he? Well, I think I think when he turned up, I think the club wasn't at the best state. It was on its knees a little bit, and what with and uh, you know, I'm not disregarding the owners as well because they came in. You know, there was there we were on the back pages all the time, not always for footballing reasons, but there was always something going, and it just sort of sparked a ma- sparked a fire, lit the match that. Right, well, you know, Blues was starting to be talked about for more of the right reasons than than the wrong ones. Good times, good times. We had some cracking times with him. Uh, yeah, like, his, his touchline antics were brilliant. I mean, you know, we, when we scored, it was like he, he was he was he, he scored almost every goal, didn't he? You know what I mean? Yeah, and and I think you know I remember like when I first signed, and um, you know it wasn't a smooth ride for him. He didn't he didn't hit the ground running. There was some real tough times, but Barry's got a real thick skin. He believed in what he was doing. He believed in his players. Um, as I said, his recruitment was very good, um, and uh, he signed strong strong individuals uh, mentally as well. I mean, it's a tough place to come to Blues, you know, and play, you know. Mm. It, a real partisan crowd, great crowd, um, and they stay behind you as long as you give them, you know, the the effort and and the determination, and show that you're hundred percent. They'll stick with you. Uh, and Barry sort of signed them sort of players. I mean, if you were a little bit milky, 
And we, you know, he soon got found out at, at Blues and uh, especially around our time, but, or my time, but um, there were, there were some real good, um, strong people. And uh, we just had a great, great time as well. You know, on and off the pitch, we had a real good time. And it, mm. and they're great memories. Mm. And you signed from Cambridge, didn't you, Lee? I mean, 1993, is that right? Yeah, um, I, I, I signed from Cambridge United, who I was part of a real successful time at Cambridge United, where we nearly we went from fourth division right through to nearly making the um, the first division or the Premier League. What well, Premier League was, uh, yeah, just had started. So, um, but. Signing for Blues was I, I was it, it was a small club that had overachieved, but signing for Blues was and playing for Blues was just a different uh, animal altogether. It was um, a different club, um, bigger crowd, big expectations. Crowd, a club that was really looking to go somewhere with the new owners, um, and a yep. real stage, you know. So um, you know it was. Uh, uh, yeah, it was a real step up for me in expectation wise as well. Yeah, Had the cop Hilton been built then the new the new the new stands. No, the, the, the well the first year I arrived in February and uh, the the old cop was still there, and then in the summer it was just you know it, it all went down it, it all came down and they put the new. That was a proper stand. That was mate. Proper stand. Yeah. When it went, when that was full, that was it was bouncing. Brilliant. I did have the experience of that, and it was it was some place. Well, if ever if ever you heard that air on, it was me. <laughs> I just remember, I just remember what used to trickle down the steps. <laughs> Pie juice. <laughs> yeah. Um, how many goals did you score for Blues? I, I did read it earlier, but I can't remember. I think I scored about. I think I, I, off record I scored six, something like that. I've scored a few league goals, and then I scored the the, uh, the last minute winner against Norwich in the in the Milk Cup that took us through to play Leeds in the semi final. But unfortunately, I was sold in between, which was really weird. So I scored the goal against Norwich at home in the last last minute. We were down to ten men. Gary Poole had been sent off. And it looked like it was going to go to extra time, and we would go down to it. And then we had a corner, and I scored. I scored in the last minute, and literally put the ball down. They kicked off, and they scored. The, uh, they blew the final whistle. But then, then in between that and the semi-final against Leeds, and another, you know, I just got the call that um, you know they'd accepted a bid from Coventry City, and. And I was gone, and it was it was it was strange, really, because I thought, you know, going to get we had a we had a real chance of getting to a final, uh, at the old league uh, yeah. couple, Coca Cola, course, wasn't it? Coca Cola, yeah, yeah. yeah <clears throat> um, and then it was, and then I was on my way, and I I got I got sold for a million and a half to to uh, Coventry, and I you know I'd, I'd stepped up and gone gone to the Premier League, which was great, but there was. It was a tinge of sadness as well. Blues was always close to my heart. And, um, you know, looking back, it's all hindsight now, but um, it's probably a little bit out of my hands as well. Mm. Do you yeah. not get a say in it at all? Sorry? Do you not get a say in it at all? You know, if, if the club sells it and that's it, you've got to go, that's it. Listen, I think it was the, uh, you know, I would have had a, I could have sat there and, and not, uh, not move, but it was pretty clear that you know they signed for me for something like seventy five grand, sold me for one point five million, and and I think the owners, being businessmen that they are, that was a massive profit for them, and um, you know so I was on my way, and and um, yeah, but you know I did enjoy myself at Coventry, but I just I just thought that maybe I'd seen that season out, whatever, and and maybe had a chance of playing at another final. Mm. Mm. And who was the best player you ever played with in your career? Uh, played with, yeah. What, ever. Um, you could do two if you want. Do do Blues and ever. I played with some good players. Obviously, um, you know, I started off. Um, I started off at Portsmouth, and there were some real good players. Cole Blake, 
Um, you know, I made my debut, my league debut alongside Noel Blake at Portsmouth. <coughs> oh, great player. Uh, then, who, but then, who was that, sorry? Noel Blake. Noel Blake, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But then, you know, I played it with uh, uh, a couple of Villa legends in, in Dion Dublin and Paul McGrath. And Paul McGrath, when I was picked and played with the Ireland squad, I around some great players there. So, although I'm talking on a blues show, I think <laughs> McGrath was, was something else. And uh, probably, you know, I was in awe of him as, as a, for, for what he was as a player. Mm. That's yeah. just one to another, though, isn't it? That's, that's, that's you know, it's not butting them up, don't get me wrong. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, I just couldn't be, I was just, you couldn't help being in awe of him. And, um, you know, uh, a bit of a hero. And as a kid, when I was first starting out, um, and then suddenly I'm I'm playing on the same pitch at Lansdowne Road with him. It was you know something else, great experience. And what about Blues, Liam? Who, who would you say was the best player you played with the Blues? Um, I think one of the ones, one of the catalysts that started everything off when I was at Blues um, was when we signed um, Mark Ward. Yeah, Wardy showed that just gave us that little bit of class and that little bit. Of Difference in midfield. Um, great lad, real good friend of mine. Held up with him straight away. Um, you know, tenacious, could pass the ball, score goals. Had a great strike. Great lad to have around the dressing room. Typical, you know, uh, scouser. Uh, had plenty to say, but a great lad to be with. And um, I think, uh, yeah, Blues. I think he when he when he signed when he. When we signed him in the summer, he came on loan from Everton. But when we signed him in the summer, I think that really set out our intentions of, or, uh, or you know, what Barry brought in, and, and you really thought, "Hang on, we're gonna we're gonna have a real go at this." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the Liverpool um, FA Cup game as well sticks in my mind. Obviously, Alan Hansen's famous words: "I think Liverpool will easily beat Birmingham." And then we took them to a replay, and they only beat us on penalties. Yeah, that was disappointing. In a way, we, we, we uh, you know, we drew at home. Yeah. Extra time, went to penalties. And I don't think we, I think, well, I took one and missed. And um, I don't think one of us hit the target. Um, <laughs> so, but, you know, great, great cut of legs. Real ding-dong affairs with uh, Liverpool. And, um, you know, I always remember that that trip to Anfield. You know, and they had a, they had a, a great side then. And, um, just, yeah. You know, showed a little bit more calmness in the penalty spot, but that was a great experience. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. And what about against? Who's the best player you've ever played against? Sorry, the crowd that, I always remember the crowd that night as well at Anfield. <laughs> there, was, there was so many Blues fans there, and um, you know, it was it was it was something else really. It was um, you know to silence the cop as well. Yeah. You know, it was great. Ricky Otto, Ricky Otto scored the, uh, the yeah, yeah, great goal. Oh, that was a great goal. That was yeah, I remember great, that, yeah. great strike. That was fantastic. Watch strike. it on YouTube. What's that, Nick? I watched it the other day again on YouTube. Oh, it's a great goal, isn't it? What a goal! Yeah. What was you there, Nick? Was you there, Nick? Uh, not at the away game, no. No, I was at the home game, but I went at the away game. I watched it. I watched it on St Andrews on the big screen. Uh, uh, no, I watched it in the pub up here. Okay, yeah, it was on. It was on at St Andrews on the big screen. That's where I was. Yeah, all right. Paul, have we got some questions that uh, were sent in earlier? Uh, <clears> we have indeed. Yeah, want to get them lined up, and we'll ask. Yep, yep. Gone in. Far away. Whenever you're ready. Yep. So Liam, what we do as well on the show is we get like our question, uh, our viewers to ask questions to ask to our special guests during the week. So I'll just uh, ask a few now, if that's okay. So Ray Hobro is asking, tell us about the experience of the Anglo-Italian Cup. Did you play the Anglo-Italian <laughs> Cup for us? The yeah, good... that, was, uh, that was quite an infamous experience as well. Um, played at Ancona in the Anglo-Italian Cup. And um, we went out there. Um, in them days, you went out with your manager, physio, coach. Um, didn't have no security with us or anything. Played the Anglo-Italian Cup. Uh, and then just, it got very feisty during the game, to say the least. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and had um, had a very uh, aggressive coach that came onto the pitch at every opportunity and tried to attack our players. And um, uh, I remember at the end we, we won the game and uh, we went 
the I think Barry Fry had taken the lads back and I just disappeared. The game was over. You know, that was it. I was off. And it was one of these um, European stadiums where the the tunnel went below the pitch and then you walked up uh, some stairs. And I found myself um, halfway up the stairs surrounded by Italians. And then it got a little bit... Um, a little bit warm, like, and um, and before you know, all, all bedlam um, kicked off, and uh, the Italian coach that was causing all the problems suddenly became he wanted to get involved again, um, and yeah, and the rest is history. Really, we found out um, that we got out of town pretty quick, um, and then we found out that. Um, that we were trying to, or they tried to deport three of us to go back and face charges in Italy. I found out back in when I, I'd moved to Coventry then and then got these letters through um, to say that I was wanted in court in. Um, <laughs> Sorry. It's a brilliant story. Grievous, grievous body, <laughs> bodily harm, and whatever. Um, and hence, I've never been back to Italy since. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. It was that against Ancona. 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 Yeah. Ancona. Ancona. Did you play, Liam? Did you play in the game at St Andrews where the lights went off? Uh, I don't think so. No, I'm not sure. That was a freezing car. I think it was a February Tuesday night. There was about six thousand there, and the lights went off for about twenty minutes. Yeah. Uh, halfway through the game, and. Um, most, if not 60, 70% of people had, had gone. They had just decided to go home. And we were up in the cop, and the only way we could keep warm was by setting fire to our football programmes. We had a big bonfire in the cop. There was one, there was one light bulb, one little 60 watt light bulb in the whole stadium, and that was it. It was all singing, put your 50s in. And then uh, the lights came back up, the teams came out, and we scored immediately. So it was worth staying for. <laughs> hey, Nick, I'm impressed with your memory tonight, mate. Well done. I know. Right, right. And, and Liam, are you allowed to go back to um, Italy or don't you know? I don't know, really. I mean, my wife a few years ago wanted to visit Rome and that, but I've just got these visions that I've never <laughs> went in through passports. Someone would get the big crook out because I'd come over. Interpol. And... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm, not, I'm not really going to uh, chance it. But to be fair to it, you know, at the end of the day, it wasn't. Um, in all seriousness, it was it got quite hairy actually because you, you know as I said we weren't surrounded by security we were just a team um, and you know we were defending ourselves really because it did get it, it did get quite nasty really and um, yeah out there the, the, the best but as I say we didn't have anyone to look after us you know we were basically put on a plane with the kit our boots. You staff, and it was like just another game. It wouldn't happen nowadays. No, we made the back pages again, though. Again, yeah, or, or for all the <laughs> but yeah, it was. Um, it was. Uh, it was. It was. I think. Uh, I think the end of it was, um, or the end of what happened with me was, um, the the fellow that was pressing charges wanted an out of settlement, um, out of settlement uh, fee or something like. That euros or something and it was all but uh, we had lawyers involved and and uh, I think it was me Michael Johnson and David Howe were involved in it or named um, you know there was a lot of racism out there as well uh, it wasn't it wasn't a nice place to go and um, you know we, at the end of the day we were looking after ourselves and, and had to yeah mm. dog eat dog mm. definitely yeah sh so, next question then. Siobhan Kenny is, um, is asking, uh, being at Blues for two years, was there any players you had any runnings with um, that you disliked or any others at any other clubs and why? Um, runnings with players. To be fair, we, I got on uh, really well with most of the lads. I'll, I'll have a little chat with you when we go through my, my, my 11. But, no, never, never had a, a a real bad word with um, any player. I think the one thing was there was a strange situation actually regarding um, when Pesh started seeing Karen. 
Oh, come that on. was quite a strange situation because we obviously had someone in the dressing room who was sitting the chief exec, which was which was quite strange. Um, but mm. you know, I've, I've met Pesh a couple of times since on coaching courses, and it was um, I think Barry realised that Pesh needed to move on pretty quickly because the dynamic of the changing room wasn't going to work. Um, mm. But you know, I didn't really. I I, I got on with all the lads, um, players from other clubs. Listen, we've all had rows with other clubs, and I couldn't. There's too many to mention that you know regarding falling out with. But in them days, it was always you know you'd have a beer after you shook hands. There was a few ructions sometimes, and I had in tunnels. Um, at Blues and afterwards. I remember going down to Norwich once. We played Norwich away um, and there was a bit of a bit of aggro in the in the in the tunnel. But you know, when you had people like Dave Barnett and big Kevin Francis, you were around you, you were always you were always um you you always felt pretty pretty safe. Safe. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. And Very not, not guards. <laughs> Yeah, I'll add on to that as well, Liam, and say who was your toughest ever opponent? So who's, who's the best player you ever played against? Um, well, I, when when I stepped up and played Premier League, there was some, you know, I played against all the best strikers at the time then. It was the Shearers, Fowlers, Duncan Ferguson's. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I I played at uh, Old Trafford um, and had the... Had the um, chance to play against Eric Cantona, um, which mm. was a real experience. Um, not because of just how good he was technically, but how big he was physically. Uh, and someone being my game as being a centre half where you're trying to physically bully out muscle and intimidate, he was having none of it. Um, and what a proper player he was. But I played against, as I say, all them top players at the time, Ian Wright, um, Bergkamp. There was too many. Ian Rush. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, great players. Yeah, yeah. And Cole Sparrow's asking, what was it like to walk up those steps at Wembley and lift the trophy for us? Uh, probably one of my proudest moments, I think, in front of that whole, um, that full stadium. Um, as I said, it was a um, dream come true. Never thought I'd ever do it. And to do it in it, it, for Blues was, um, yeah, it'll live with me forever. I've still got yeah. it. Of lifting that trophy, and it was a big old yeah. trophy. Well, yeah. yeah, it was epic. <laughs> Massive. <laughs> Made a and then you, had, you had the metal on top of it, but um, yeah, I got it up in the end. Yeah, uh, John Smith's asked personal best performance, uh, that Liam had for Blues and best game he played in for Blues as well. Sorry, I've got the ice cream man again. We had this problem the same time last week. <laughs> <It's terrific. laughs> Can you tell him next week? <laughs> Buy me and stop one. Yeah, I better I better read that one again. Um, so John Smith's asking best personal performance Liam had for Blues and best game you played in for Blues. So your best um, individual performance and the best game that you played in for us. Um, I can't really recount. I, I, I just said I think the moment that we we I think everything that I enjoyed about playing for Blues was always very much team. It was You know, we celebrated as a team. It was not, there was no individual. I think, when if I look back and think about, you know, maybe that goal I scored in the quarterfinal, the, the timing of it and yeah. the elation of it, you know, they I knew that they weren't going to score. I think that was a real high. But, you know, I, I, never, I never, we never sort of uh, came out and uh, I've done all right. And it was all about, as long as we, you know, we, I'd played, Sometimes I'd played poorly, but won. Uh, yeah. And that meant more than playing really well and losing. You know, it was sure. really a team of uh, as long as <clears throat> three points. Or that was what it was all about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Steve Jobs asking, can, can Liam tell us some funny stories um, about when Barry Fry was in charge? And I'll add to that as well. Is there any good pranks or, or uh, tricks that were played on any teammates that you can tell us about as well? I remember a great... We we went to Brentford away. I think we won two 0 But I remember on the on the trip down, we were um, uh, 
we were on the bus and uh, we were we were running a bit late actually, and it was a big game against Brentford because they were our rivals and um, or pushing for the top. And uh, Barry Fry pulled the coach over, and he wanted to go into or tried to pull the coach over, and he wanted to to uh, to put a horse. David, one of David Sullivan's horses was running. And he, he wanted to pull the horse, uh, pull the coach over so he could go and get a bet on. And um, as captain, I said, come on, Baz, we're, we're, we can't. We've, we've got to get going. We've got to prepare for the game. He said, no, no, I want to get this. I want to get this bet on. Get this bet on. And <laughs> anyone, uh, Steve, Stevie Claridge, who anyone will know, likes, likes his horses and likes a bet. Yeah. Uh, from the back that he'd take the bet. So he took the bet. And uh, so it's on the television. We're going into Brentford and um, the horse comes in. And I think it came in at something like eight to one. So obviously, um, Cleggy had to, to weigh in. But typical Baz, he sort of... And it must have been hard for Steve because he... he I think, you know, I think Baz had about, you know, 200 quid at least on it. So suddenly he's he's going into a game where he's now owing money instead of, you know, um, collecting it through any win bonus. So um, Buzz said, you know, listen, I'll waiver that and I'll take off X amount for every goal you score from now to the end of the season. And I think he finished top top of the league of uh, goal scorers. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> any more questions, Paul? Uh, no, that's the end of the, 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 the fan view questions as well. We might have a few live ones as well, Chris, if you can see any live ones on the stream. Are you having a laugh? It's about 200. Okay. Um, tell us how your international <laughs> career started off then. Uh, start, mine started at, um, at Cambridge. I, I uh, went. I got under-21s to start with and went <clears> to <throat> a long tournament uh, and then progressed. And then suddenly I was still at Cambridge, really, sort of uh, playing in the old... What would have been first division championship, and then got uh, a call to 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 go in with a full squad. Um, only made five caps, but it was one of them ex- one of them eras where I was just surrounded with unbelievable players. So, you know, there was the likes of that. I made my debut uh, alongside David O'Leary, um, obviously Paul McGrath, Kevin Moran, Ronnie Whelan, John Aldridge, Noel Quinn. Uh, Andy Townsend, all these players, and I was just, you know, this this young lad that was playing for lowly Cambridge amongst these superstars, and it was a great experience, and I loved every minute of it. And uh, I wished I could have played more, but you know, there were some big players to try and nudge out, and big just being around Big Jack at the time as well it was just an amazing time. Uh, Kevin oh, Kelly says, so. um, Steve Claridge, a great goal scorer. What's Liam's take on it? He scored 20 goals that season. He, you know, Steve Steve was quite a complex, or is a complex character. I've known Steve. I played with him at Cambridge, and he's a pop, pompy lad as well, just like myself, and I've known him for a long, long time. Um, and, you know, Steve's quite a complex lad, and um, but he loves his game of football, and he's always loved his game of football, and the one thing you always got from Steve, he would run his socks off for you. Um, and, uh, you know, I, me and him used to sort of sometimes clash. Not clash, but, you know, he'll admit now that sometimes his, his organisation or, or preparation, i.e. we'd be kicking off for a game and he'd be doing his boot off or he'd kick the ball and his boot would fly off and, but, and his socks would be running by his ankles with, half a shin pad hanging out and his shirt but he loved his game of football and um, you know he scored some big big goals for us but also you know when it was tough you could put the ball in the channel and Steve would get after it for you and and chased and harried Uh, and that was that was that was as big for us not just his goals but his work rate um, was great for defenders there's nothing like that being a centre half and watching forwards chasing down centre halves and defenders for you. Mm, yeah. yeah. Um, Craig mm. asks, um, how did Liam feel after Ricky Otto tore us apart at South End 
and then signed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Ricky, you know, I think, I think Ricky, Ricky had a lot of, lot of ability. I think, um, I think the expectation probably got to him a little bit when he first signed. Um, he grew into it, but he, he came for quite big money. And I think the, the expectation for Ricky um, took him a while to actually settle in. But a great lad, great, great lad to have around, funny. And I, I believe he's a I believe he's a man of the cloth now. He is. He is, yeah. He's in the church, isn't he? Yeah. Mm. Do you remember his debut, Liam? Do you remember his debut <coughs> against Cambridge, ironically? No, I can't. Was that away? No, it was at home. He scored in both ends. He scored an own goal and he scored against Cambridge as well. Yeah. How does he remember that? How do you remember that? <laughs> For God's sake. Yeah, I remember Liam, um, Liam Dace. I remember Ricky Otto's um, debut for us. Yeah, scored in both ends. It, it was a one-one draw. Ricky. He got both goals. I think he had a bit of a kind of full background before he came to us. You know, I think he, he served time in one Majesty's Hotel for a little while, and but you know what he's doing now. He, I heard, you know, someone told me he was on. Um, he was actually guesting on Songs of Praise a couple of a month was, ago. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, unbelievable <coughs> turnaround. Mm. Mm. Good, oh, good lad, always a good lad. Great, great fun around. Always had a smile on his face. He was. Uh, I like Ricky. Mm. And on the coaching side, Liam, are you involved yourself nowadays? Are you, are you looking to get back in or? Yeah, well, I've, I, I've obviously done a bit, uh, I, I did a bit of um, uh, managerial stuff and coaching at non-league level, but now I've gone back to my, where it all started, really, at Portsmouth and um, and I'm um, head coach of the under-18, so I'm looking after the 16 to 18, the, 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 the apprentices, if you like, or the scholars, as they're called now. Okay. Good stuff. Right, we need to get through to Liam's, uh, up to Liam's 1 to 11, don't we, uh, Paul and Nick? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if, we start, if we can start with the formation, please, Liam. And then uh, obviously I'll, I'll remember to ask you who the captain was as well this week. So, um, yeah, so if that's okay, please. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to go for a traditional 4 4 2 because that's how we played. Um, yeah, man. Uh, in them days, and um, <laughs> still like that formation. Um, yeah, so we're going four four two. Um, in goal, Ian Bennett. Uh, yeah, was probably the first one of the first signings Barry made when he when he. Yeah. Uh, great keeper. Um, they had a good keeper in, uh, already there in Kevin Miller. I always thought Kevin Miller had a, uh, was a great keeper and, and had a great when we moved on to a to a good career. But Benno was a great lad, not the biggest, um, but read the game really well. Great shot stopper, great character to have around. Um, you know, always either taking the mick or, or um, you know, loved the bet, um, loved his horses, funny. Um, yeah, loved playing in front of Benno. Um, always was there. If you made a ricket, he would come out with you know and, and get you out of the shit a little bit. But so, <laughs> goalkeeper, oops, brave. He would come for crosses. He, he did say to me the other, or I saw something he put on Twitter the other day with him sitting there with four bottles of man and the match champagnes that he he'd won when it is time at when I was there with him and I said, well, two of them are mine because I gave him, you know, he had nothing to do playing in front of me and Barney. But, um, <laughs> great keeper, great keeper and a great lad. Yeah. Um, right back, I'm going to go for uh, Gary Paul. Great friend yeah. of mine. Um, strong lad, had a bit of everything, could attack, could defend, physical, um, good right foot on him. Uh, great delivery from wide areas when he got forward. Uh, another great character, um, proper East Ender, East End uh, lad. Um, still, still keep in touch with him now. Great, real good friend of mine. Yeah, uh, I, think, I think one of one. <clears throat> I'm looking at that season. I think there was a game up just at the the next game after your a win screw. We played Brentford at home, and Brentford were breathing down our necks. We beat them two 0 but in the first first ten minutes, I think it was, it was a fifty-fifty with um, with uh, 
Martin Granger. Because uh, Martin was playing for Brentford at the time. And uh, they, you, everyone knows how Gringo um, tackles. But, you know, Pooley didn't, didn't flinch and actually came out. And, it, and that set the tone for the whole of the, the rest of the game. And we went on to win 2-0. But it was a real sort of... Um, uh, it was a real moment where it was like, well, what's going to happen here? And, and Pooley went and, and actually came out top against, mm. against uh, Martin, which not many do. But, um, yeah, great player, great player. Um, mm-hmm. Left back, this was a tough one for me. Um, when I first joined, played alongside John Frame, who was obviously yeah. a great player for Blues. A lot of a yeah, very good. <clears throat> Great left foot, didn't look the most athletic of players, but never got caught out of real pace. Great left foot, um, competed well, but had a lot of injuries in my time. And um, that flip between him and Gary Cooper, who, who was a fun, another London lad, but a real funny character and a great player. Great, had a lot of intelligence, not the biggest, not the, not the quickest, but never seemed to get caught out. So... It's a tough one for me, but I think if I've if I've got to go on on what we achieved and who I achieved it with, I think I'm going to have to go with Coops on that one. Only because John suffered a lot of injuries while I was there. Yeah. Um, Centre halves. Um, I'm going to go with um, Jono. Jono came in um, when we got to the back cup to the championship and um, played with him. Uh, good, good half season. Very athletic, quick, great leap, and I think he went on and you know became went into sort of loose folklore of what he did before uh, going after I'd left. Yeah, uh, um, but great lad, infectious. Um, always got a smile. Um, you know, funny to be around, but a real good player as well. Uh, as I say, he's, he had pace. Not the biggest, but he could really leap. Great com- competitor. Uh, honest is the days long. And um, as I say, the rest is history with John. I went and... Yeah, definitely. Nice guy. We had him on a few weeks ago, actually. Mm. I didn't... We had him on a few weeks ago. Yeah, I, I did. I, I always loved meeting up with John. O. Great lad. Yeah. Uh, he always got something to say and um, good for a bit of banter. Yeah. Um. My other centre half, I'm going to go for, uh, and there were some good ones I played with: Richard Dryden, Chrissy White, who was, you know, a bit of a legend at Leeds and, and Arsenal. Uh, but my my my, my central defensive um, department, John, would be Dave Barnett. Mm. Um, mm. I spoke to you earlier on about Barney. Me and Barney never, some t- or not never. Uh, how can I say? It? At first, we never saw eye to eye in ways. Um, mm. We were just two very, very strong characters. But when we crossed that white line, um, we knew what had to be done. And I see Barney, when I go back to Blues and every now and then, if I bump into him, I really, you know, uh, we, we've we got a real good um, relationship. But to start with, we were a little bit, you know, it was there was a bit of sort of, um, I wouldn't say animosity, but there was an edge between us. For whatever reason, and that <coughs> we didn't socialise together much. But when we crossed that line, we knew what each other had to do, and we relied on each other. And um, he was great to play with him. Uh, quick, strong, aggressive, had a real, real streak in him as well. Tough, tough opponent, or tough for anyone to to play against. Um, and a, and a good player, good, good, strong player to go. But as I said, I, when I see him now, it's always great to see him again. But when we first started off, there was a little bit of an edge. Maybe that that was the ingredient we needed. Yeah. Mm. Tough player. Tough. Yeah, yeah, it was a toughie. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I wouldn't. I, w- I wouldn't fancy running at the pair of you to try and score a goal. I tell you. <laughs> that was the idea. I think that was the plan. I wouldn't fancy <laughs> running. <laughs> <laughs> that was our main. As soon as we had, we we looked to sort of um, you know be strong men, intimidate, um, give 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 
a bit of a platform for the players that could really play to go and win the game. We knew our strengths, we knew each other's strengths and we, we worked that out well and played, played to them. Mm. Great team. OK, so uh, on, the, on the left of the four, I'm going to go for um, Jonathan Hunt. Um, Hunty was probably the best two-footed player I've seen. Scored some great goals, great delivery. Um, I thought all players had two feet. Yeah, well, <laughs> playing, you know, no real pipe. <coughs> you could give him the ball, and he he he'd keep hold of it for you. Um, he would, um, it gave you a bit of time to reorganise or get up the pitch. Um, great intelligence. You could play off play off the right or the left, and score some great goals. I think he's. I remember one uh, one game he scored a hat trick, and if you actually looked looked at the goals, I think he scored it was like one with his left, one with his right. He might have even headed the the last one, but great player, um, great delivery, great lad. Him and him and Gary Paul bounced off each other because they used to travel in both from London, um, but a real real quality. Just gave us that real bit of quality and delivery that pass. Um, not yeah, a great player. Pardon? Great player, wasn't he? He was yeah, a quality not... flair player. Yeah, and then went on and again, went and played. Uh, when I go on about, when I said earlier about um, Barry's recruitment, so, you know, if you look at these players, you know, Gary Cooper, Barney, uh, Pooley, um, Unty, they all went on as well and played, played at another level. And, um, yeah, Unty was one of them that, you know, I wouldn't say he was the bravest, but that wasn't his game. But you give him the ball, he was always brave on the ball. He'd take, you know, he'd take the ball in tight situations. And uh, uh, it, that that's a bravery in itself. Yeah, yeah. We were kind of spoilt for that sort of 10 years, I want to say, when we had Jonathan Hunt for probably five of them. And yeah. then, like, Brian Hughes for the other five, you know. Th them players, one after the other, were just a treat to sit and watch, you know. Well, they were probably... Proper ball players, you know, they could get. Yeah. When I, when I said earlier on about getting you off the pitch, is you're <clears> defending <throat> for like for whatever away from home, and you get the ball to people like Jonathan Hunt, and uh, he'd keep it for you, give you a breather for a little while, or you could get organised, or you could get some movement ahead of him, or get some support around him. But he had that ability that he could keep the ball. So we yeah. Could him. Great player. Yeah. Um, in midfield, this was group for me um, I'm going to go for Wardy was always going to be in my team but there were so many good midfielders but around that time but Wardy I think as I said earlier I think he gave us that little bit of quality that bit of spark he'd been there he'd done it he'd, he'd had you know he played in a West Ham team that finished second to Liverpool I think in 86 and then played for Everton and Man He'd been in there, he'd done it, he had that experience, he knew how to act um, uh, the occasion, he knew how to um, pass on experience to the rest of the lads. He was a big-time player, scored some great goals, um, great, great right foot, left and right, he could ping it out. Um, as I say, tenacious, was never intimidated by anyone, um, not the biggest, but got around the pitch. Um, and great to have in your team. Great to have in your team. Yeah, cool. really good player. <clears throat> um, to play alongside him, I'm going to go for, uh, and this was the hard one because, um, you know, I played in with uh, Peter Shearer in there who was so effective because of his physical strength. Yeah. Around the pitch, he could tackle, he could head. Um, a real robust, um, you know, Box to box player, but I'm going to go for Tatey. Um, mm. who, for me, I think probably could have played at a real high level. Had everything for me. Uh, great pass with the ball. Could tackle. Um, could score goals. Um, could pass. He had. He had. Uh, you know, a real deftness and and could see a pass. Great technique. Great touch. But also loved. Loved the other side of it. Loved the scrap. Loved to be involved. Probably got involved too often, or, or if it wasn't. I think it was, not for us. He didn't. 
actually and Kona actually. Yeah. Looking back, it was usually I, I always blame Tate on that one, but you know, proper blue nose. Um, Love playing for the Blues. Uh, had a great, great relationship with him, and and I think them two as well complemented each other really well. But it was a tough one because. He did have the likes of um, Peter Shearer, and it was hard one. But I'm going to go for Tatey, I think, on that. Mm -hmm. uh, on the right side, like I said with Hunty, I think there was a player that I played with, uh, which, which was very, um, I wouldn't say underrated, but gave us so much value, was Louis Donoua. Yeah. Oh, brilliant, yeah. So much pace and athleticism. And one of them, it was like, if you could get the ball to Louis, he was one of them where he would push it, get after it, and just get you up the pitch. He'd get you up the pitch, give you a breather, um, and, and, and he would score vital goals. Again, he was never intimidated for a wide player. Um, got his foot in. Um, great lad to have. Would run up and down all day long. Good work ethic. Um and, 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 and just a dream to play. He played up that um, up that left side for me. Um, and he would play on the right side. Louis would play at the left. And um, he was just great to have because he tracked back. Um, um, but also a great traveller. with One of them players that he'd push the ball and, and get after it and could catch pitches. Is, it, is he the fastest player you'd say you've ever shared a pitch with, Liam? He's probably one of them. He's probably one of them. He did, you know, he would take off. It was like... He was one of them players that you get the ball to him and people would just get on their edge of the seats because if there was grass in behind defenders, he would, he knew when to just put the ball in behind and get after it. Nothing complicated with it. Wouldn't need to have two or three, four, five touches. Get it out of his feet, push it in the grass, and then he uses his pace and athleticism to get after <clears> it. I remember, um, I remember, I remember we beat Black. Sorry, Liam. I remember we beat Blackpool um, seven-one at home on, uh, I think it was New Year's New Year's Eve, um, and he yeah. got one of the goals. And honestly, he picked it up in our half, and he was like an absolute missile, just flying down the left, and he cut in and scored. And it was just so, so fast; it was unbelievable. Do you remember that game, seven-one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I remember that. It was just, um, I think everything we went every time we went forward, we scored. But um, yeah, Louis, as I say. Proper old-fashioned winger. A lot of wingers now want to either play inside or come inside. He was quite happy to take forwards on the, oh, sorry, uh, fullbacks on the outside. And from there, you take him on the outside. You get your, you get free kicks. You get your corners. You get your throw-ins. Where nowadays you see wingers receive the ball, and the first thing they want to do is go on the inside, which is probably the little bit the easy way. Where Louis was always quite happy to go the hard way, which was on the outside of a Fullback, very very effective. Yeah, very good player. Um, forwards, um, I'm going to have to put uh, Cleggy in there. Steve Claridge. Yeah. Uh, mentioned him before, I mean, in them season, scored so many goals for us. Run his socks off, literally. Um, would would receive the ball back to goal again. Look after it. Um, you know, was brave. Took hold of it brought other people into play and scored his goals. I don't think you could have asked much more of a centre-forward, really. Um, and again, went on and had great success at Leicester as well and had a great career. So, um, yeah, really goes without saying. Um, great to have in your side. As I said, we chased down lost causes, especially yeah. if we get pressure, we could just stick the ball forward. Steve would recognise that, um, knew that it was just going to be either put in a channel and he was off and he'd, he'd, he'd run in there and um, again, great for defenders, took the pressure off you, went and harried defenders, closed them down, first line of defence. Um, funny character, quite strange, you know, took a lot of stick off the lads for um, and banter and piss taken from the lads but, you know, he took it really well, give a bit back and, um, you know, I've got a lot of time for Stevie. Yeah, nice. Thank you. So uh, the last one uh, sent forward. I'm going to go for Big Kev. Um, ha the reason being, I think, I think there's times when you play games that you need an outlet. You need someone, something different. And the way they they did complement each other, Kev and um, 
and and Steve, but he was great sometimes where you could just get it in the box. You know, if 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 we have to go route one, if we have to hit the big man, let's do it. And um, lots of scored lots of goals off just little knockdowns and the way he put defenders off. Probably not the most technical player, but if you talk about effective player, he he really affected the game for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great team, that is. Mm. Interesting. Very good team. Oh, yeah. Uh, Just before we go, um, I need a one... I need need an answer. A one question... A one-word answer on who you think will be the next... Blues manager, and I'm asking this online to the uh, on the shout box as well. Paul, Craig Gardner, Nick, Jerry Gill, Jerry Gill, Liam, me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going for um, Craig Gardner, although I'd like um, Jerry Gill. I would like Chris Hewton to come back. Good shout. Mm. Mm. He won't come back, though. Mm. No, he won't. No. no. Unless we get new owners. If we get new owners, obviously, one day. You never know. Why? Mm. Why? Why? I don't get it. Why? All my life, it's just been unsettled. <laughs> mm. I know. I know. It's like a soap opera, Nick. We, mm. we, we win the Carling Cup. We go down. Same season. You know. Oh, we, can't, we can't. We don't do things by half measures. We're the only team in the world not to win a game in the reign of three different popes. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's a few, few, few coming in now. Um, Chris Hewton says Carl. Um, Nigel Clough says Mark Kerr. Mm. Uh, Sean mm. Siobhan says Lee Bowyer. Uh, Jason mm. says Javier I think Gracia. He said... Who? Javier Gracia. Is that you say it? I don't know. And then we've got Slavizar Jokanovic. Yeah, it'd be a good shout because yeah, we've, we've already got his assistant from Fulham. Yeah, there's a couple of um, there's a couple of shouts for him actually. Somebody says Jasper Carrot. Probably not going <laughs> to. <happen>. Yeah. <laughs> Lee Bowie's a good shout. Yeah, Lee Bowie's not a bad shout to be fair. Liam, who was your captain in your one to eleven? Sorry, I always forget to ask. Uh, Wardy. Wardy, yeah, okay. Wardy. Okay, good stuff. Uh, Kevin Phillips he says he, he would be in for it as well, but um, Neil says it will be Gardner. Uh, Lee Johnson, Brucey says Steve Wood. Would Cross the divide. He's not going to come back, is he, Brucey? No. Well, he's still at Newcastle, only at the moment. Yeah, that's no chance. No. no. Mm. And of mm. course, all the rumours about uh, ownership as well this week that have been floating around. Yeah. Yeah. Normal. I mean, I- I don't know a lot about the guy that was at Leeds, but obviously, um, if it happens, it happens, and you know we'll see how we go with that. But mm. don't know, really? you know what else to say to that, really? I can't. You don't know much about him, Liam, the guy that was at Leeds. <laughs> no, no, I don't <laughs> either, to be honest. So, Liam, who was the um, who would you say in the blue squad from your time was the best and worst dresser and the best and worst dancer? I think Jono's the worst dresser. He still is. Again. <laughs> Again. <laughs> he's Every, got everyone who's played with him. I saw, I saw him a few uh, few months ago. And, um, yeah, he turned up with some clobber. That was shocking. Again. <laughs> uh, I'm starting to get used to that now. Yeah. Michael Johnson's uh, closely followed by uh, probably Steve Claridge. Yeah. A best dresser? Who would you say was the smartest? Best dresser would have probably been um, oh, I don't know, probably one of the lads from London, I should imagine. Maybe yeah. a, one of the well, Auntie or Pooley, I should imagine. They they, yeah, yeah. they they always turned up pretty sharp. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Well Nick, I think we've come to the end, Nick. I know, mate. I can't believe that an hour and uh, five, six minutes has gone now. Well, that has, uh, that has just flown past. Don't forget, guys, if you want some uh, Birmingham City Accessible Blues masks, please get in touch with Steve Portman, Linda Ensor, or any of the Accessible Blues team, or go on to the Accessible Blues Facebook page and you'll be able to order them through there. Hopefully, mine will come in the post tomorrow. Unfortunately, it didn't come today. Um, I'd have worn it tonight. 
on a warning. Well, there you go. Liam, what can I say? Thank you so, so, so much for the memories. And uh, good luck in your future career. And we genuinely, genuinely appreciate you being giving your time up tonight to come on the Tilton Talk Show. Our guest list this year, thanks to Craig Courtney, has been absolutely incredible. Um, the work that he does, the work that he's done behind the scenes has, has just blown everybody away. And, and week after week after week after week, we've got guests after guests after guests lined up. Next week, ladies and gentlemen, dun, 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 Paul Hipkiss, announce it. <laughs> Mr. Robbie Savage. Who? Only Mr. Robbie Savage himself. Are, Mr. Yeah. Robbie Savage, get your questions in on, on the Facebook this week here. And ask what you want to ask, because we ain't afraid to ask the questions, right? Because we're just fans, sitting usually in a room on a Monday night, unfortunately on Zoom tonight. But we'll be back here next Monday, believe me. Liam Daish, thank you so, 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 so very much for everything. And thanks for the memories and thanks for your time, my friend. Before I go, um, yeah. like everyone, we've all been clearing out our garages and sorting through things from through the lockdown. So... I'd like to give you this. This, if I, whatever you want to do with it, it's up to you. But this is my shirt from the the Huddersfield, um, the last game. Ooh, uh, promotion. Wow! It's the away shirt. So, whatever you want to do with that, I'll give us address. I'll post it to you. And you Could you sign it for us? I'll sign it if you want me to sign it, or if you want it to stay as it is. But what do you reckon, Chris? It's mine. I got good. It's mine. I, no, I said, reckon, signed or unsigned? Signed, please. Signed. There you go. No problem. That's incredible. Thanks, Liam. Appreciate that. Oh, that's a really nice gesture, Liam. Thank you. And uh, and, and again, we genuinely wish you well in, in any, everything you do in the future. And thanks for everything you did for us at Blues. Uh, and you know what? I've got goosebumps, man. Seriously. Uh, what a time. What a time to be a Birmingham City fan. It's superb. Thank you very much indeed. From myself, from Paul Hipkiss. Good night, all. From Mrs. Brown <laughs> and from Liam Daish. Keep right on. Absolutely. Words. I can't wait to roast them out again. I can't wait. I can't wait. Let's get football back and let's uh, let's be sensible and you know keep this social distancing thing going. We're like uh, some idiots over the weekend. Oh, I can't believe Stay it. Now. Hour and ten minutes, Paul. I can't. It's just like we started this five minutes ago. I know it flies. It really does. Yeah. Yeah, we could have sat here all night talking to you, Liam, but, um, you know. Let's come on, lads. I've really enjoyed it. Man's got to have a beer. <laughs> Keep right on. Liam Dace, ladies and gentlemen, the hero and the legend that is Liam Dace. Thank you very, very much indeed. Bless you. Thank you. Good night, good night, good night, good night. Oh. Singing a song.